Can a river be a mother? Can humanity in birth, in rites of passage and in death find solace in the arms of a river? Yes, it can if the river happens to be Ganga. My name is Loki Shori and I am a cultural anthropologist. For over 10 years, I have been researching the various aspects that make Ganga so special for mankind. Come with me as we, through the series supported by ATCS, take a peek into little known aspects of the Mother River in her journey through the Himalayas. How would you react if you were an engineer experiencing a famine that claimed 800,000 lives and then saw floods with the changing seasons? Find a solution, of course, and build a 500 km long canal. Join me in revisiting the incredible story of the Ganga Canal, an engineering marvel built after the Agra famine of 1837. Over the next two decades, the passion for building the Ganga Canal would consume Colonel Proby Cotley, an engineer and paleontologist of the East India Company. After walking, riding, camping, rowing and surveying for six months along the Ganga, Cotley's elaborate plans persuaded the British that the canal was indeed feasible. Digging for the canal began in 1842 here at Bhimgoda in Haridwar, a sacred spot where the Mahabharata strongman Bhima is supposed to have hit his knee on the rocks to make the waters emerge from the ground. Cotley's fate of conceiving and building the canal was no less. Very soon he realized the immense challenges. The right bricks were not available nor was the mortar. For a project of such magnitude and scale, there weren't even enough engineers and hydrologists. Cotley tackled each problem with patience and perseverance. He went to the extent of establishing Asia's first engineering college, the Thomason College of Engineering, which now stands proudly as the IIT Roorkee. A predominantly British township with its own church soon grew around the college. The Ganga Canal was, at the time, perhaps the greatest human endeavour ever attempted. Naturally, there were many obstacles in the path. Perhaps the biggest challenge was to come from the Pandas, or priests of Haridwar, who strongly objected to Kotle's efforts to block the free flow of the sacred Ganga. He pacified them by leaving a gap in the dam to allow the waters to flow unchecked at India's most sacred spot, the Harki Peri. Can you imagine a Ganesh Puja being organized by the East India Company for the inauguration of the canal? Near Rurki, the land fell away sharply and Cotley had to build an aqueduct on the erratic Solani River to carry the canal for half a kilometre. As a result, at Rurki, the canal is 25 metres higher than the original river. The 980 feet long Solani aqueduct, referred to as a water highway marvel by civil engineers, consisted of 15 spans of 50 feet each, separated by 10 feet wide piers, the trough being 175 feet wide. Stones sunk nearly 20 feet under the bed of the river supported the arches, and the work was done so well that upon removal of the centering, or the wooden frameworks used in constructing the arches, the keystones sagged only an eighth of an inch. Today, there is a new aqueduct next to Cotley's, but the engineering marvel still stands out for its precise brickwork and sharp design. 
to transport construction material to the aqueduct, Cotley ran India's first steam engine in 1851. A prototype of the Jenny Lind, as the engine was affectionately called after the renowned opera singer. The Swedish Nightingale still stands proudly outside the Rurki railway station. The Mumbai Thane passenger link was to come a few years later. A huge lion image was fashioned out of bricks and lime mortar as a model. Once successful, four more were installed along the canal on the stretch from the village of Mehwar to Rurki, where the canal was raised by filling tons of soil. The lions mark the superhuman endeavor and also exhibit the might of the British Empire. While building his labor of love, Cotley was mindful of the aesthetics too. It is believed that the famous Landseer lions in London's Trafalgar Square are actually a copy of the Rurki lions. When the canal formally opened in 1854, its main channel was 560 kilometers long, its branches 492 kilometers and the various tributaries over 4,800 kilometers long, irrigating a whopping 5,000 villages. To convince the British of its profitability, the canal was kept navigable. While rowing on the canal waters, one can only imagine the thrill of traveling on a boat from Rurki, 500 kilometers away to Kanpur. For a project of this magnitude, it is fascinating to see how each bridge, the water locks and the mills have been designed to perfection, keeping the local requirements in mind. But Cotley's problems did not end even after his retirement. There were accusations of corruption, which he defended once again with his characteristic patience. Soon he was knighted, ironically, not for his efforts at engineering in India, but for his studies on fossils and survey work in England. Meanwhile, Cotley's canal has evolved its unique ecology and offers a route for migratory birds flocking to the Ganga and Yamuna wetlands. A unique heritage site of great significance the Ganga Canal must be preserved for future generations to study and marvel at.